so now that we talked a little bit about what you can change, what you can't change as far as the semantics of parallel streams, let's keep diving deeper into the various steps involved. And what we'll start off with is the, the first key step, which is partitioning a parallel stream's data source into chunks. So you can think of it like you know, slicing a pizza or something like that, breaking it up into, into pieces. So if you recall, a parallel splitterator, or splittable iterator as it's known, is what's used mechanistically in order to partition a parallel stream into these chunks or these substrates. And in our earlier discussion, we showed how you can use a splitterator to traverse elements in a source, right? So remember how we talked about being able to do you know, try advance or for each remaining in order to read through and get each element one at a time uh, from this or a batch at a time. What we're now going to do is we're going to talk about how a parallel splitterator can partition all the elements in a source. So partitioning is different from traversing, right? Traversing is getting each one, and partitioning is breaking things up into chunks. The streams framework is what actually does this. This is not something you would typically call from a user app. I mean, you could, but you typically wouldn't. So instead, the framework is going to do this for you. And it's going to use this method called try split, and it's going to end up calling it recursively in order to break up the input source into smaller pieces, the chunks. And we'll talk about how it, it works here. So the first thing it does is it checks to see if the input is below a minimum size. And uh, if it is below a minimum size, it returns null. And null is simply an indication to the framework that we can't break this thing up anymore. It's, it's too small. Splitterators, and then of course, the other thing it does is it goes ahead and breaks it up into uh, these even sized chunks and then recursively breaks them up again. So typically the way this is done, or actually all the time when this is done, there's no need for synchronization because there's, um, the splitting is done in a single thread. So the, the splitting of the splitterator is done in one thread of control. Split is called recursively into all the chunks are below a minimum size. So if you've ever been to like uh, an amusement park ride, it says you must be this tall to ride this ride, right? Well, that's kind of what's going on here. It, it waits to see, it, it keeps splitting until it reaches a size that's too small to ride the ride, right, where the ride is split. So uh, that's basically how that works. Some collections split evenly and efficiently, uh, array list being a good example. And you guys have some practice with this as a result of the assignment. This is the actual implementation of the splitterator from the array list class in Java. And it's very similar to what you did, just a few differences. Um, so here's try split. Try split goes ahead and figures out the end. Get fence just returns the end. And then it goes ahead and has an index it's keeping track of, which is set to low. It figures out the midpoint, which is low plus high, uh, divided by, by two or right shifted by one. And then we go ahead and figure out whether or not there's anything left to split. In other words, is the, uh, the elements basically just the the singleton element, in which case we return null because we're done with the split. Otherwise, we make ourselves a new array list splitterator, and we're going to go ahead and split things up here so that uh, this will take the uh, essentially the right half, and uh, that becomes the new array list splitterator. The, the, uh, this will become the high. Actually, I take it back. It's going to make the left half. It's going to make a new left half, and then the right half will be what this um, splitterator already was. So it basically just breaks it in half. And once we finally got to the point where it returns null, then try advance is called, and try advance will basically get each element as long as there's anything to get. So that's how we actually return an element. Once we've broken things up to its atomic size, we go ahead and grab the element at that location, and um, so that's how you that's how the framework advances one at a time. This is how it breaks it up into the chunks. Any questions about that? So that's a really nice example. ArrayList is a great example. Just like your array, splitterator was a good example because it's easy to split an array in half. No problem whatsoever. Conversely, other collections don't split evenly and efficiently. A good example being a linked list. And if you take a look at the source code for linked list in the Java source code, you'll see what the problem is. The problem is that um, they don't want to sit there and iterate through half the elements in the linked list and then split, right? That would take an awfully long time. It would be basically O of n 
if you look at the asymptotic time complexity as opposed to O of 1. Splitting an, an array is constant time, O of 1. It's basically just fiddling around with a couple of variables. Splitting a list in half would take O of n. So they don't quite do it that inefficiently. Instead, what they do is they read through the list and create a new array of up to batch unit elements. And batch unit keeps changing as, as it goes. But basically, it's, it's taking the linked list and it's breaking it up into smaller chunk-sized arrays. And then it's turning those things into split arrays that are, that are ordered. And that's what tri-split things. This is way, way less efficient than that. That's really fast. This is much slower. And likewise, tri-advance is also less efficient. It has to do some funky stuff with pointers and so on and so forth in order to be able to accept the element. So not surprisingly, link lists don't split very well, whereas arrays split very well. And other data structures are somewhere in between. But generally, stuff that's you know, able to be split in constant time will split well and split evenly. We'll talk more about these things later. And in fact, you've seen some discussions about this later as well.